So I want to introduce you and uh, and our viewers to a really awesome game. Yeah, show me what you got. It is a it is Red oh, Alert oh. Space Fleet Warfare. Wow, look at I mean I know why you got it, but just the cover alone would be like, practically I mean, sight unseen. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. came out um, this came out late in 2019. Uh, it was a Kickstarter game. Uh, the game was created by Richard Borg, who is the designer of the Command and Color system. Uh, Tig and I have done a couple of videos on Command and Colors games before. We did a buyer's guide to Memoir 44, a World War II game, as well as the first edition of Battle Lore, a sort of fantasy and medieval warfare game. That's and cool. this game, um, Red Alert, uses the same, the same game system. The Command and Colors game system is actually used in a bunch of different games uh, with slight modifications between each game in order to add like just the color needed for that theme so does does this game have any connection to red alert the old the game used to play you know online with the none whatsoever okay so real quick the way command of colors works is you have a battlefield you have a board that is divided into three sections uh each side each player each general gets dealt a hand of cards these are command cards and the cards will say something like you know, move two units in the right flank or move one unit in each flank or move all your units in the left flank, that sort of thing, plus a bunch of specialty cards. So each turn you play one card and the card, like I said, might say move three units on your right flank and you get to move three of your three of your armies on the, the, the right side. And you go back and forth, um, taking shots at one another and, you know, eliminating one another's troops until you meet whatever the victory standards are for that particular battle you know the goal might be like capture and hold this town that kind of thing um, but obviously what's cool about this one is it's outer space battles and not only so not only did i get that but i got the uh, the one expansion and the other expansion and the other expansion <laughs> and the other expansion oh my god and the other expansion holy crap and the other expansion and the other expansion because you can't it's you can't just have the main thing. <laughs> Were they bought all at the same time? Yes, I just yeah, got them just all. Like what nuts? <laughs> just got them all at once. <laughs> I just got them all at once. Jesus God! The game's really cool for 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 a number of reasons. One reason why it's pretty great because you learn the system once, and even though there's differences between games, once you have the basics, you have the basics. Like right. you can learn any new game in the series in in five minutes the other cool thing is that of course being that it's a space combat game oh boy you get to use dozens and dozens of cool oh, spaceships oh, oh look at that oh they have stands i kind of for some reason i figured th that they would just lay you know like lay on the board but those actually have stands oh no when you see the uh and there's and there's there's Fancy. bunches of them too um whole, whole bags now when you see the board set up you will be delighted and impressed because not only do all these ships, you know, sit on these these wonderful little stands, but the board itself is enormous. It's really? larger than my kitchen table. What? <laughs> it's a like a vinyl, I guess, like a vinyl mat or cloth mat because it's so big. Jeez. And it's it spreads out to the size that it actually covers and slightly overlaps the ends of my kitchen so, table. So someone unsuspecting buys this game and then all of a sudden whips that out and realizes that it might not fit in their kitchen. That is that is the one main complaint that I've seen uh, a couple people have, including the uh, uh, the very well-known board game review channel, Shut Up and Sit Down, mm -hmm. which some people might be familiar with. They're really great, incidentally, by the way. I think it was them. It might have been someone else, but I think it was them who said, hey, this game is really good, but oh my God, nobody is going to have space for this. When you see it set up, it looks majestic it looks awesome but then you also have all these tiles that that customize every battlefield there's asteroid fields there's planets and with some of the other the, the other expansion there's other things such as meteor storms and things like that from looking you know from uh you showing off all the other ones it looks like they just made it a bigger version of the older games right because the, the those pieces look huge compared to the other ones yeah, that's exactly what they did. What they did, the uh, they just scaled it all up, right? Right. So, like the amount of space on the board is technically the same as all the other games. Right. So the right. number of hexes that are on the boards and stuff, they just made the hexes freaking like five times as large as they are <laughs> in the in the other games. That's to show the expanse of space. I guess. Yeah, which is like I have mixed feelings because it's cool because it looks really great. Right. 
and it feels kind of cool to be playing. I, I've, I've played some some battles on this, and it's awesome when you've got this big, expansive space, but it's also kind of cumbersome. You got these nice big cards that are nice and handy because they have all the like the statistics and stuff on one right, sheet, right. so you don't have to constantly be referring to the um, referring to the rules. So in your core game, you've got fighters, the little fighter squadrons, which are pretty self-explanatory. They can move real fast, and they don't hit hard, and they get beat up fast, but they can like move fast and very maneuverable. Then you've got uh, destroyers, uh, cruisers, battleships, mm -hmm. and then your flagship. Your flagship has like a little uh, squadron of fighters that go alongside it. And each one of these have like different capabilities and different, abil you know, um, uh, different strengths. Um, and just, you know, like Navy combat, but in space. Right. And then, then you go to these, these expansions, right? So this adds the vice admiral ships. Ooh. So it's kind of like the admirals, but these are the vice admirals. This one is also neat. This is the, uh, the dreadnought pack. Oh, so this adds uh, a set of Dreadnought ships and fighter escort with them as well. These are possibly like the toughest ships in the game. These things can just take a walloping and they dish out tons of damage, but they don't move fast, you know, and so on. It's sort of that, you know, that trade-off kind of right. thing. Then, and these are pretty cool. This is the, uh, the carrier, the carrier starship, the carriers. And so that's pretty self-explanatory what these are. These are... Space carriers. Yeah, they're basically aircraft carriers. Yeah. And uh, they have a really cool ability. Te typically in these games, the fighter squadrons have to operate as a squadron. Right. Right. And so so in, in all the games of the Command and Color series, all your little pieces have to stay together. Like if you have four little guys, they always stay together. And when they get hit, one guy dies. And, you know, and like it's only until the last piece gets killed that the unit is actually killed. Okay. So in the core game, this little squadron of fighters flies around as a unit and does its thing until it gets until they all get blown up. What the carrier can do is it can split up its little fighter squadrons. So instead of a, like a little unit, a section of like three of them all together, they can go to three different places and attack three different areas at one at, one, at the same time, huh. which makes them like really deadly because yeah, that can, yeah. this can like cruise into like let's say a group of of, of enemy starships. And send out all these fighters all over the, over the place to start like picking things off. Really, really cool oh. ability that changes up the rules a little bit. And then this one, this is my favorite: the logistics and space platform. This is awesome. <laughs> so this is this is basically like a space station. It's Deep Space Nine. Oh, geez, that's pretty cool. And all these transport ships. The, the way the transport ships works are uh, in. In the core game, there are two different, other than defeating your enemies, there are two other ways that you can uh, score victory points in order to eventually win. Um, sometimes this is by capturing and holding objectives. So it might be um, have your ships in orbit around this planet or the, okay. you know, that kind of thing. Or sometimes there are what, uh, what they call these breakthrough scenarios where the goal is to push your ships through the enemy line and exit off the back of the board. Um, so what these these transport ships do is, if you're trying to break the enemy blockade, typically if your ship breaks through, you get one victory point. With these, you get two victory points. Put these in your fleet in order to get victory points faster, knowing that they, they also get blown up faster. They can't fight or they fight with very weak, you know, very weak ability. So then the other expansions for this are the, the Meteor Storm Escalation Pack. And the way these work are these go on the board. And there's sort of a mechanic that tells you how and when they go on the board. Okay. If they go on the board and they sweep across the board automatically, every, you know, every, every turn, moving across the board. And as expected, like, they can crash into ships, F up you or the other side. Like, you don't have any control over them. It's just a natural space phenomenon. So if you put one on a tile and it's facing a certain way, it basically has to cut across the, the board that way, I guess, or something, that kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. They sort of you automatically. If you're there, if your person happens to be there, it just gets destroyed, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're you're screwed. You get like it. it and you can take it. turns putting those down, like everybody, each person, or or when you set up, do you kind of put them down already, kind of thing? The way it works is before each player's turn, uh, you roll dice. You roll three dice, and if certain, if if you get a certain result on the dice, that tells you, okay, place one of these down. Oh, okay. So it's sort of random. You never know when they're going to pop up. Okay, that's um, good because then you're both at the 
you don't have control over it. You're both at the mercy of even like whatever ones get put down. Yeah, exactly. It's just this crazy outer space phenomenon that ha- you know that that's uh, that pretty happens. cool. That is uh, very similar to this other expansion. This is the Space Rift ex- uh, Escalation Pack. This uh, has a similar thing where there is a giant space rift that forms on the board. Um, and, you know, you've seen it in a million sci-fi movies, the, the rift in, in rift space. In space. And I guess the rift in space can, like, capture ships and move them and, like, do stuff like that. And same sort of thing. This It moves through the board at random. Um, and then the last of the other ones is Quartermaster's Escalation Pack. Uh, this one isn't particularly inter- is, isn't all that interesting to me actually. It creates rules for for some like special specialty units. They're they're a little beefed up. They might have longer range, or they, they oh they give you like plus ones or plus twos kind of on each ship or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. The, the game design is pretty good because it's very good about not forcing you to have to remember all the rules in all your spaces where you have like all your plastic ships. You'll have a little cardboard piece that's there with it as well that has all the stats and all the abilities right there. So at a glance, you know, like, that's what class ship it is. That's how far it can move. That's how many dice it rolls in order to hit, et cetera. They, they design it really well to make it super easy to, like, know the stuff it's kind of on the fly. Huh. This game, you've got a specialty die. The symbols um, correspond to classes of ships, like, you know, destroyer class, fighter class, et cetera. And then some other symbols, like... And then you also have the red alert symbol. Red alerts are kind of like, um, hey, my ship just got messed up. Like you, you get forced to retreat and then the ship gets uh, gets sort of frozen where it is because they're having technical problems. You blasted them to the point where it has technical problems. And then uh, you have to spend these star points in order to fix the technical problem. We both kind of agreed after playing a couple of battles with it. Like this is one of the one of the most fun versions of the command and color systems huh. that we've played so far. It's it's a lot, it, for some reason it's faster paced than the other ones. It moves really quick, and plus it's space battles. I mean, yeah, I mean, who doesn't love that? Because you can finish up a battle in this. Like if you know the system well enough, so that you can just jump right in and play. 25, 30 minutes if that. Geez, that's crazy. I would never think because I don't know. Maybe just because it's so big and everything, it just seems like like the setup is probably longer almost than some of the game. Yeah, yeah. When you set this up, you can then you can rip through several battles like real quick. That's pretty uh, cool, though, because then you can get revenge on. Like, if you lose, you can get have a revenge game. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. take up the whole night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. I love that about it. You know, you play three, four hours, and you're done. Like, you just killed your night. Like, it's right. done. So if you lost, you lost. But with this, you can go back and forth a few times. It is revenge. You can get revenge. Exactly. <laughs> the box is filled with all sorts of, like, little stuff. There's all the ships and these... The, oh, yeah, this is the space debris, because when uh, capital ships, when battleships and flagships gets gets blown up, the debris... Oh, you have to, yeah, there. you have to put, like, a debris chip down? Yeah, because, so then you have to navigate around it. There's, like, the little chips that, that say what the, 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 the stats are and all that. The outer space features, like, you know, planetary bodies and asteroid fields oh, and all that. Cool. One thing that draws me to many board games that I'm a, I'm a sucker for is sort of a, toy, a good toy box factor. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker for that, so... That is our, our, our Command of Colors uh, Red Alert uh, Space space Fleet Warfare, I guess, buyer's guide slash review thing. Um, I think it's really awesome. If you like the Command of Color system, then you already will probably like this game. If you haven't played the Command of Colors game before already, um, just know that it's really easy to learn. And if you just want to have like cool one-on-one fights with, with, with people, it's like, yeah, it's super easy to learn. It plays fast. The only caveat is it's gigantic. You need, you need space to play it, like literal space, like table space. Um, and the expansions are cool. Like the dreadnoughts are awesome. The, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the carriers and especially like the, uh, the space platform, you don't need any of that. You don't need any of that stuff whatsoever. They're fun enhancements, but like you can easily save your money. Just get the base game. There's more than enough in there to, to keep you occupied. I just got all the other shit because I'm an idiot and I need to have all this stuff. Yeah. So uh, here you go. We haven't done board game stuff for a while, so I'm excited. It's been a long time. We have a lot of board game stuff on our channel, so feel Absolutely. free to check it out. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out more of our board game stuff. We got lots of it. We're big. Uh, we're one of the biggest uh, Axis and Allies channels. I would have to say, to be honest, I think that's fair assessment. I think I think we've done pretty pretty well there. And uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time with some more board games and craziness. Bye now.
Bye.